That's right, bud. bad. We're not going to do that. Yeah, that's awful. That was <laughs> a bad idea. <laughs> we should have done it on the show, though. It's a cool knife. It's got to be a knife. Yeah. Oh. Still pretty, sh still pretty sharp. It's a pairing knife. I should have a, a partner. <laughs> oh, this is all gold. We're just blowing it. Oh, Nouvelle Cuisine. The, the bottles go right there. That's cool as shit. Somebody left a spoon out.
Yes, honey? You know what we were talking yesterday? Yes, we were. Do you know about periods? Yes, what about periods? Do you have periods? Yes. All women have periods. Tell me what happens. Blood inside of my body comes outside from an opening between my legs. Do you have a question, Jill? Yes, I want to know Susie's periods. Susie? Yes, Mom? Jill wants to know something. We want Jill. Susie, do you have periods? Do, do I have periods? Jill, all women have periods about every four weeks. And grown man record night. So let's everybody get aggressive and get on the whole train. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's going on? <clears throat> What's happening? How are you? Good. We got um, starting a little late. We got to keep going. Let's move it. Moving it. Are we late? Um, I think we're a little late. A little late. We got to, we got to do a joke. Jay, you got us a Fourth of July joke. I do. It's a, Jay's it's a, got a it's brand a new Fourth of July. Oh wait. Jay's got a good Fourth of July joke. What you got, Jay? Here we go. Okay. Stand by for the open. All right. When you do, uh, uh, when you get, what do you get when you cross Captain America with the Incredible Hulk? Okay. What do you get when you cross Captain America with the uh, the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> wait a minute. What? No, don't. No, don't play that. No, that's fucking terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. Who's playing? This is our studio audience. That's that's terrible. We had all we had. We've been waiting on Fourth of July all year long, and that's the one we come up with. No, I'm gonna well, give you. You got. Hold on. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to come up with the best Star Spangled Banner Fourth of July <clears throat> Independence Day jokes you can come up with. Jay, ready? Go. What's red, white, black, and blue? Uncle Sam falling down the stairs. What kind of tea did the American colonists want? Liberty. What was General Washington's favorite tree? The infantry. What do you call a redneck bursting into flames? A firecracker. <laughs> what was the most popular dance of 1776? The independent dance. What does the Statue of Liberty stand for? It can't sit down. Who was the biggest jerkster? Grown Man Record Night. We appreciate all you guys joining us here on this Friday night, the day before. Well, actually, it's not the What do you call before. that? What's Jay's job? The warm-up artist that comes out like this crowd work. He is a warm-up guy. Okay. Yeah, or uh, as we call it in the business, a fluffer. But yeah, we had, uh, <coughs> yeah, thanks to Jay for coming in here with... Uh, to get us in the mood? 24 jokes with four punchlines. That's what we're <laughs> always looking for here. I'm always looking for content. Hope everybody's had a good week. Getting ready for an even week. better weekend. Pretty good week. Uh, 
a big week here. Moved the fiance and the kid into the house. So I've had all doing week. like grown man shit. Oh uh, yeah, I've had I the went, week. I wasn't here last week because I went down to Georgia and got a. Steve went down to Georgia. I just don't want to say. No, I went down there and got a vehicle. So we got three cars now, taking up a, a single driveway. Is this one of those ones you won in a Ponzi scheme? No, actually, it belonged to my parents, and then they passed it on to my niece. The, the, the one in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Now, she doesn't need it, and um, so they passed it on to me uh, for my daughters to use. Oh, what? And it's 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 17 years old. It's a 03 Highlander, but it's only got 104,000 miles on it. It's got, okay. it's got less mileage than my car on it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Aaron Griffin in the chat had a second kid Sunday night. Oh, that's so, that trumps all. Hey, cheers, though, to uh, Aaron Griffin. For the kid, let's get some hype in the chat, guys. Finally, I finally I could talk like a real streamer. Let's get some hype in the chat for Aaron Griffin for having a baby. I mean, nobody get too carried away because he had it from fucking. Hey Jay, do me a favor. Give me that blue, that blue bag in there. My, that cooler bag of mine. It's by the fridge. It's where my to Tequila is. We ought to do a shot just for that. No, we don't want a donation from Aaron. No, 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 Aaron. no, 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 I come prepared. I come I'm, ready I'm for whatever. I've not had a few weeks. i got a roll of toilet paper in here. I've been taking it a little bit easy. In case I need to really do something. Um, I'm taking it a little bit easy. But I won't stop you. And I won't, I won't not participate. Exclamation we, point, $20 shots all around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, dude, yeah we need to do a shot for you. So. Hell yeah. We'll pay out him $20. No. Let's not get carried away. Hold on. There's a couple of big limes in there if you're interested. Big limes? Limes. 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 Lime. Don't do drugs. Wait. Shane really likes that period video. I think Shane's got a little fetish working. Mm. Hey, dude. Skull. You youngin. What's a new youngin's name? Type it in the chat. Let's see what it is. Mm. You got a social yet? Ugh. That tastes like my middle school gym teacher. It does help get that taste out of my mouth, though. From the middle school gym teacher? No. I meant to show this a couple okay. weeks ago. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, this is really cool. It, it is. It doesn't it really belong is. to me. It belongs to the family that's in this house. Yeah. Howard. And why don't you tell, tell us about this? Well, this is... um. The fiance's grandmother had this like mobile drinking kit. And she was like, how record night is this? It's like a mobile drinking it has kit a, it station. Had, it even has a key. Yeah. Um, and so if you open so this let's, up, this let's, is like you take this to like a cocktail party for whatever reason. And it comes with these like glasses and like stir. That's a muddle. No, it's a knife. It has a, there's a knife, a, a paring knife. A couple nice places with a strap for your bottles. Yeah, actual bottles. Um, a, sh a shot glass, which is plastic, but um, and a couple of plastic uh, rock rocks glasses. Bill Dancer President, what's going on, Aaron? Some spoons, and then what's really cool is some of the other stuff in here. There's a napkin that says Nouvelle Cuisine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fancy folks now. Don't get it wrong. And it says, uh, distributed by Nutramedics. Was she involved in some kind of fake health care? We'll talk about that off stream. Nutramedics International. Okay. And it, funny thing else, so there's a, there's a roll of Tums EX, extra, th extra strength Tums. There's no light in this area. And the topper though is the, there's this weird bottle in here in a bag. Yeah. That's halfway full. So let me ask you guys. There was this weird bottle in this kit right now that we found right before we started the show. <laughs> so, what's the first thing we do? You guys that have watched Record Night for a few years now, what do you think the first thing we did to this 
40 year old travel drinking kit, we did. <laughs> I'll give you a couple of seconds to come up with your answer. Yeah, we took a sip out of the thing that was in there. Oh my God. Um, now we've done this, but remember, I'll, for those of you who aren't old school, when, when I first started coming here, a f my wife's my wife my wife's aunt's husband oh, i won't say that. uncle because it was like a remarriage way down and later in life he was a really cool guy that traveled a lot and he 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 always picked up airplane bottles of liquor mm -hmm. and there were hundreds of them in his yeah. basement and i had i had those little carry They're like cases toolboxes, toolboxes that were wooden big lined wooden full with all these really cool bottles some were decorative yeah. and some Everyone were just was here he remembers that shit and we drank a lot of that a and some of it was really good because it was, aged, it was whiskey, aged whiskey but some of the like shooters and the weird liqueurs. the liqueurs oh the my. liqueurs were garbo and what we had tonight we're we're thinking was a brandy or a wine yeah because probably was, a brandy because it was in a little bottle yeah. and you don't put wine bottles we like mowed, that. We, we made both borf all over this set like it, it was, was nasty terrible one more thing in that was in there the, the coolest thing other than the cool bar is a pack of matches from a very famous area that in famous. north carolina the grove park inn in Asheville. in Asheville, which always reminds me of the hotel from the shining it's an old um Turn of the century, 1920s. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald probably partied there a lot because him and Zelda. Zelda was in a sanitarium in Asheville. I don't know if you knew that. Sanitarium. Yeah. Da -da 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 it was an apartment. Yeah, it was an apartment building. But the Grove Park's cool. You go there, you can walk in. You don't have to get a room. You just walk in and check out the lobby, and they've got these fireplaces you can walk into. They don't let you walk into them, but they're so freaking oh. huge. Oh. And, and all the rooms in the hallway have that Art Deco look to it. And yeah. It's just really cool. Oh, it's a cool place. Like, like even the uh, even if you don't go stay there, you can go like have brunch there. Yeah, like yeah. There's on the porch. In fact, I'll tell you from these matches, Grove Park Inn. I don't have my glasses on. Championship golf course, nine tennis courts, three indoor. Racquetball, squash courts, because people played handball. People played squash Any handball? back then. Nautilus Fitness Center. Handball. Restaurants and lounges. Ha the best thing? Elaine's Nightclub. Oh, oh, oh. That's got finger written all over the it. Grove I forget Park. I'm live on Facebook. I probably shouldn't be saying Should we so. call him? Here's a number here. Let's call him up. Actually, they Aaron Griffin said he stayed there after we got married. It's awesome. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. The, uh, Grove the, Park, the yeah. girlfriend's family, Asheville's is, family. Asheville's just a great town. They're big, uh, they're big into Grove Park. And it's actually not far from the Moog uh, museum, uh, museum and factory. It's, it's, on that, well. it's on that. It's on that side of town. Very true as well. Hey, you guys want some Girl Man Record Night merch? I'm gonna drop you a link right now. Get you a T-shirt for what? the summertime. A T-shirt. Get you a T-shirt or a mug or some leggings. leggings. How about a, a record digging Still bag? Still waiting to see the leggings. Record digging bag. Coffee mug. We got we got traffic. Uh, one from the road. Burn. Waiting for somebody. Boom. A lucky man who wears leggings. That's true. I forgot we were doing that. There's some merch. Also, uh, don't forget we got a Spotify playlist. You guys want to take Roman Record Night on the road with you? Please, God, for Lord, Lord's sake. For uh, Is that not the right? Oh, I, I, I've misspelled it. I misspelled it. I've been Lord, drinking. Lord. How about this one? There we go. There's a Spotify playlist. It's all these classic record night tracks you can take with you on the road. Listen to it in your car. It don't cost nothing. Go listen to it. Do us a favor. Go listen to it. Just wash it off with a hose. Just come on. Come on. I know you're ditching. So, um. You Where good, you been, Steve? You had a good show last week? Uh, sure. Everybody, did we have a good show last week? We had I, Jay on here. I think you have to watch. I was down in uh, Georgia. We were talking about record albums that you would get to uh, convince your friend that maybe want to collect records that, hey, some records sound super fantastically above anything other, any other format. Did you guys enjoy that episode? I had a really nice conversation with my niece who's... Your niece? Songwriter who's signed with a company. Oh, that's right, yeah. Really doing some really cool things. Uh, we were talking about, you know, programs and what program do you use and all that shit. And it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good conversation. But th what I wanted to tell you was on Sunday. Well, I don't have to tell you. So any anybody who knows knows me through Facebook knows that whenever I go to Atlanta, 
I always like to stop either while I'm coming or going at the Varsity. Oh, yeah. And I what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? I'll take a couple chili, the chili dog combo, you know. And so uh, I, I told my wife, I was like, hey, how about Sunday for brunch instead of us eating at my mom's house? We get in the car and instead of going straight back towards Winston-Salem, which it's a pretty straight shot, but you come off the road, you travel about 30 or 40 minutes off the road uh, there and back, so you hour and a half extra time to go to Athens, right? and we'll go to The Grit. And The Grit is honestly probably hmm. one of the best vegetarian restaurants in the country. I don't know that. Really, uh, musicians have written brave things about it, because a lot of musicians will come through Athens. But, um, and it's in their like cookbook that my wife bought. And so anyway, I introduced my wife to The Grit like uh, a year or two ago. So every time we get a chance, we like to go there. Sure. Um, but like I said, I, 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 I got to get my varsity in. And I'm not so bonkers about eating vegetarian as, as some other people. So, yeah. but it is really good. Even their- I like vegetarian their, stuff. They make their own like bacon that is phenomenal. I'm that, still afraid yeah, of that, tofu. That kind of stuff is, is amazing. Tofu almost. So like anyway, so we're still in pandemic mode. Um, so I was like, how about we do this? We'll go, we'll go to the grit. We'll get some food, and we were in separate cars because we had to pick up that extra vehicle. We'll, we'll meet at the Grit, uh, we'll order some food there, and then we'll go over to the Varsity because they got a big dining room and people are starting to dine in now. Mm -hmm. They probably have, they probably have doing it right, you know. It's enough, they have separate rooms of walls and different entrances, and so it, I'm sure there's a way they can do it. So we go over there, and, they, and I was like, well, I'm going to go over there and go and get my food, you know, and we'll sit down and eat. So while, and it's, it's only a mile away from each other. So I drop them off, or we meet at the grit and, and we order the food. We go, I go to the varsity. The varsity's not letting people come in. So, oh, okay. so I had to go through drive-through, but I got my, I got my chili dog combo. My daughter got a chili dog combo or she got a, hot, a couple hamburgers. Anyway, go back over to the grit and there were some tables out in the sidewalk. And so we ate on, on the sidewalk outside the grit which was really cool. Mm -hmm. So, but right, right, way past, halfway past my two chili dogs, I was probably, I probably had a couple bites left. Mm -hmm. The one of the, the guy that I had gotten the food from for them, which mm -hmm. I spent a lot of money, I, I spent enough money where I could sit there and eat. Sure. He comes over and he goes, I'm, um, I'm sorry, but um, I, me I meant to say something. I meant to say something, but we, oh, no. we don't allow people to, to consume meat on our premises. <laughs> so I could have been a real a-hole here. <laughs> Who's out there? <laughs> Whoa, I heard that. Was it a gunshot? Maybe. Roll them so up. I could have been a real a-hole and just said, actually what I wanted to say was, you know, I understand that and that's cool and all, but I'm not sitting on your property. Yeah. Because I'm city on the property? fucking sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Now, it might be your table. I understand that. But, you know, I was cool about it. I, and honestly, yeah. he didn't make me stop or whatever because I really had two bites left and I was done. I used to play music with a guy who was a big vegan guy, which is cool, whatever. Yeah. And uh, you come down for band practice, like, you know, you come, you get off of work, you are you run to grab something to eat, you come to band practice, whatever. And I was dogging a couple of McChickens or, or somebody. Well, I don't even think it was me. Dogging a couple of McChickens and the dude's like, yeah, hey, I don't I don't really appreciate you bringing this. Uh, I'm like... <laughs> I don't want to speak out of turn, but you're out of the fucking band. <laughs> I mean, do your own thing, but all right. All right, guy. Yeah. The, the militant uh, vegetarian. We've given vegetarian. you a whole lane. When you veer over into my lane, you might get hit with my car. <laughs> you know? I'm get, we've given you a lane. Once you get a lane, that's all you get. So that was that was probably the most interesting thing about my trip, other than you know the whole car thing. But yeah, had some phenomenal Thai food. Did you do digging while you were down there? Nope, no, no digging. I didn't go anywhere. No I didn't digging. Go any digging? But you got digging. I, and I was right outside of Wuxtry, and I was also right outside of that other place right next to Forty Watt that I went to the last yeah. time, where I got the Dinosaur Junior record. But you got digs for tonight. I do have digs. 
And I got digs as well, but this is a different little dig for my situation. In the process of, uh, you know, moving the two chicks into the house, Cameron, two chicks Cameron used in to live the in, the, in this back bedroom here. Yeah. He left a couple of boxes of records. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I pulled out some of the records and said, oh, there's some decent stuff in here. And I, I thought the cats would have messed them up by now. Right. They're good. They're some good. of them are a little, eh, but nothing crazy. Uh, but I, I saw a couple of decent ones. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Set them to the side. Today, I went through kind of a bigger box and pulled some like, what? Holy shit stuff out of this box. Right. So I got a stack of records to go through. And they're not even mine. They're the cameraman's. But we can, we're going to, you know, we talked about taking this time, the coronavirus, not being able to go out or whatever. Or if you don't want to go out with a mask or if you feel weird about it or whatever, digging through your own collection, rediscovering things that are right around you. Right. This is even a better situation because they're not actually my records and I've rediscovered them from another room. Right. So it's even better because even when I say I'm going to go up here and rediscover things, and I, I do this You're number. Digging in yeah, your... Yeah, that, 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 that. And I, I don't... Right. It doesn't always work. Right. You know? That really works. You went digging in your own house. I went digging in my own house, man. Ever wish you could live in that labyrinth with David Bowie and that uppity uh, talking worm? <laughs> I wish I could live with any worm. I'll be honest with you. I could. I know. Um, I couldn't get into labyrinth. <laughs> Mervin Griff. Now this is this is why he's this is why he's the homie right here now. Last person who told me I couldn't eat something got a new set of teeth. Boom. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That is the grown man record night spirit to a T or t or to a teeth. Yeah, everybody stay in their damn lane. That's all that's all I ask. Ain't no, ain't no big beef. We ain't, I ain't got no beef with nobody. Oh, I, got, I, 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 I totally got could get it if I would were, were, I walked in and sat in your restaurant. Yeah. Um, and I know it's your like I said, I know it's your table and your chair, but it ain't your fucking I'm not side. Butchering not, a, your, your table, you're lucky your table's on the sidewalk. I'm not butchering a lamb in your fucking pickup window. Right. I mean, come on. Hello, come on. Anyway. Uh well what else we got before we get to some uh, little news um, news information? I don't quite remember. I had an interesting day or a couple days. Yeah. Um, working on volume two of this beyond beyond the mask uh, COVID compilation. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I just deleted that graphic. I'm making a volume two, and so I'm getting people to send me stuff. I'm reaching out to other people and getting some more stuff and. But I've, I've got a song myself to, to add. And so I had laid down the roots of it, but sent it to a couple people who were on volume one. And I was like, hey, would you mind? I'd love if you could play this or do this mm -hmm. on one of my songs. And they were, everybody was really cool about it. So uh, last night, um, one of the musicians, a uh, girl named Susan, sent me like three different tracks of her playing viola. Oh, on viola. The, I, I had sent her the, the I song. Didn't know, I didn't realize she was a musician. Right. And then today, uh, Jeremy Soul, this one guy who plays a really cool acoustic number on the piece, um, he came over, brought a mandolin, he brought his guitar, he also brought a, a soprano saxophone. Mm. And we laid down just a number of different things. So um, it's going to take a lot of work to kind of compile this into the right mix. To go from how, many, how many tracks you think is going to be on this whole thing again? Like the same amount? Um, sort of? More because I'm more. actually I'm actually building this one in audition. Hmm. I did the other one just on my Tascam for eight track, and I probably mixed down. I, I bounced a couple things just to give me a couple more tracks. But this one's got a lot going on, hmm. and I'm trying to learn more about because audition is a very powerful program. And Ping while, pong. And well, I still have it on my computer because Ping pong I work, delay. I work for a company that pays that effing subscription whoa, for Adobe whoa. that I would never do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to take advantage of, of using Audition. Whoa, whoa. So it's whoa. it's a lot more powerful than I've ever. I've been using Premiere and After Effects for years and years and years and years and always kind of wary of using Audition. I didn't know what, what it was for other than just fixing some audio problems. Yeah, I love the integration of Audition. Speeding up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can you can right click on a clip in Premiere and say open an Audition. It'll open <laughs> it and Aaron, Aaron Griffin's a stuttering sax, Mikey's favorite thing. <laughs> we played a, a record that had some stuttering sax earlier. 
That's a, oh marble race time. Woo! We got some marbles coming, baby. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I did today. Shane said you should have said those were, those were vegan hot dogs. <sighs> yeah, but <laughs> varsity written all over them. <laughs> yeah, if anything's like varsity. so extreme yeah. from vegetarian and vegan, it would be the varsity. Yeah, the greasy V. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Uh, pip, a couple of things that coming out. A couple of weirdo items. Got a lot of Japanese flavor tonight. Excuse me? Japanese flavor. What is that? Octopus? Uh, wasabi? Wasabi. There we go. There we go. That's probably less offensive than octopus, right? Octopussy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't care for the... I don't... Uh, boom. Look at this shit now. This Japanese groove disc guide. That's cool. It's Japanese. Look at the cover. The cover is I love super it. dope. Japanese jazz funk and rare groove, oh, 68 oh, through 80. So these guys, um, it's DJ Yasa Yoshizawa Dynamite. Right. And uh, I know that word. Shintum, releasing a new compilation, the way I just said, this September. Um, both specialists of the Wamono style. They have styles for their like music, like they do like martial arts. Like Bukaki? Well, nope. Monkey style or <laughs> Manta style. The, 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 Flotus the, leaf. Well, mono style is a term for vintage Japanese records encompassing a wide array of genres, which is pretty cool. Uh, they said they previously did a uh, did a book together, but the thing is, this is Japanese funk, soul, groove, and disco records between '68 and '80. What and size I, font do you and, use? I, I, it varies. <laughs> That's really big. It varies. It varies. <laughs> But I will Might say, as well be. You can fit it on the page. That I've become, uh, thanks to like Metal Theologian, um, Chris Brzezinski, hmm. uh, fell in love with some of this Japanese jazz fusion funk stuff okay. from the 70s. Yeah. Uh, and I've realized, and we'll talk more about this later, folding on into the 80s, that um, a lot of stuff that the neo genre of vaporwave has taken from. This 80s Japanese uh, Tokyo Nights kind of sounding stuff. Okay. Synth wave kind of stuff, but from back then, not not neo synth wave stuff. Anyway, we'll talk about that in another little piece coming deep, up. Just some deep conversation. Uh, Twitch wasn't letting you chat, man. You man, send me something. I'll, I'll I'll time them out. Nobody's nobody gets timed out over here, unless you're a bot. Are you a bot? Zonk, man. Do you know the end? The uh, this Sabbath thing, the end? The end? You mean the series of albums that they put out? The reissue? No, this is a 2017. Oh, no. Concert, Birmingham. I didn't know if this had previously been released or not, and I didn't really take the time to research further. You mean further. Birmingham, England? Birmingham. Their yeah. home. Yeah. Their home. Not Alabama. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, after nearly 50 years, this was the final show of Black Sabbath Farewell Tour back when it all began in Birmingham, England. It was the most appropriate place for the Godfathers of Heavy Metal to take their last bow. Geezer Butler, Tony Ami, Ozzy Osbourne delivered a show that focused on their classic 70s albums that defined a genre and inspired true gener or future generations. Three LP set, 180 gram, blue vinyl, gatefold jacket. I didn't know, I don't know if this has been, if this is the first time this has been released or what but if this is the live stuff and they're doing it um that the, er, the early stuff live right that's what i'm trying to say here i would have a feeling that that would be pretty damn awesome thoughts in the chat you guys I, some of you guys are going to be way more familiar with this than i am and i love some sabbath but i'm you know i'm not the i'm not king shit of turd mountain or anything i'm just kidding i really why do you but, say Worcester? It's Birmingham. It's Birmingham. No, yeah. it's a... He, cameraman just wanted to say Worcester. Oh, he likes saying Worcestershire. Yeah. His dad would say Worcestershire. You don't care about that Sabbath? He's so edgy, mental theologian. Um, no, I don't know it, though. I, I know, as, you know, later, later Sabbath, I'm a little like, meh, meh, meh on it. But I, I do wonder what that sounds like, though. And it's not something I'm going to go spend 40 bucks on. No. 
I'd rather I'd rather spend I'd rather put that money toward a Vertigo OG real Sabbath if that was what I wanted, you know. Right. I've got some decent sounding <laughs> Sabbath stuff, so I mean, I'm not worried about it. I don't you know, I don't own any NIMS Sabbath. I have one. All my stuff is like Warner. Warner I don't I don't have yeah, I don't have um, Vertigo. No. But I don't have NIMS. I know everybody shits on NIMS. I don't have NIMS. I have mostly like U.S. Warner stuff, yeah, I, I believe, which is fine person. for me. That's fine. Uh, it's cooler to have the other stuff, like collectory wise. But yeah, makes you look really cool. Yeah, come on, come on. I'm not gonna go spend a couple hundred bucks on it anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking of which, this is some stuff that came out today. Um, let me get. Speaking of Japanese stuff, I told you. Pacific Breeze. I saw a guy in the VC post this earlier this week. Um, it's a guy who looks like Steve. Steve who? You. Oh. Nor- uh, Norman. Norman Maslow. Norman. You guys know that Norman guy? Nice enough guy. Got some good taste. When the uh, Attic, uh, Light in the Attic released this a couple of, uh, 2019, the first edition. Who? Norman of who? Maslow. Look him up. Gotta look him up. That's the guy I sent you with a picture of the hat. Well, what's the guy in San Francisco? Wrote the Beatles book. In VC. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is Japanese city pop. AOR, which I don't know what that stands for, and Boogie. 76 through 86. Uh, it's got this jazz, fusion, funk, boogie, disco, kind of all wrapped up into this. And this is what, what really... You look like that guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's, there's better pictures where you really... <laughs> Guys, Steve's you way, VC Steve, guys. I think Steve's way cool. VC guys, don't you guys think Steve looks like Norman Maslow? He's a VC guy. Look at look on Facebook. Look up Norman on Maslow on Facebook. Okay, get back, get back to you life. I'm telling you. Are you in love with this guy? No, I'm just telling. No, no, it's uh, it's all seventy Sabbaths. Seen him on the end tour and thought they were great and Ozzy sounded great. That's the that's the kicker right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting Shane said yes a bit. Mel Theologian said ha 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 a little. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe if I wore that hat. Wait a minute. Hold up. Oh I see what you're talking about here. Here you go. Yeah. Look, hold up. <laughs> Something like this. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that look like Steve? <laughs> At a glance, that'd be Steve. Totally. I mean, the guy in the front, not the bear in the back. <laughs> bear. <laughs> uh, but strongly disagree? Come on. Next week, I'm going to come dressed as Norman Maslow. Dresses Norman Maslow for Halloween. <laughs> Jason dresses Norman Maslow for Halloween this year. There's one that was. Uh, there was one that was good. nuts. That's pretty good. Does, he have, a, does he have a beard in any of them? Yeah. Okay. No, you guys don't think. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. You guys don't think. Why are we spending time on this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, draw well, somebody this says Mazzy, so it looks like Mazzy. I don't know. Fever doesn't drink martinis. He would if you put one in front of him, I bet you. Anyway, um, what else was on here? The weekly stills thing. I think that was all the stuff. It was a pretty low, low key week in terms of like things that came out this week. Right. Although. In playing uh, some of the what we played stuff tonight, learned that there was a new Willie Nelson album. Right. We missed stuff. It's been a crazy week. I did see. I uh, missed a Willie Nelson. I album. went to Underdog this week, and I did see that there have been. And I think this were released last week, but I wasn't here. Um, a lot of the uh, early King Crimson King albums Crimson, that yeah, were yeah. mixed by think, Stephen Wilson. Yeah, well, I think we, we talked about that yeah. when they were announced. Right. You know, when they well, were I released. saw them in the store. Yeah. I saw, I think I saw Islands and I saw Lizard, and I think uh, I might have seen 
in the wake of Poseidon. Super pricey? Uh, I mean, they weren't super pricey. They were in the 23, 24, Oh, that's better. $5 I mean, range. It's got Stephen Wilson attached and to so, it. I think it would be more than that. You guys know what I'm saying here. I was interested, but I've got all this, and I'm, and I also love Stephen Wilson. I'd like to see what he did with it, but I'm not ready to, if I'm out digging, to do that. You know. I've I've asked this before. Do you guys do that? I I, I might take a take a if 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 it was the right one, the right uh, early King Crimson album. Do you have are all like the early King Crimson? Yeah. Are your copies, um, OGs or close and like. No. Not deluxe reissues. No, but they're like from, a lot of them are from like the 80s, I probably. But you don't have like a 2014 that's got a bonus disc and all this shit and all that? No, I don't have anything like that. Okay. Because for the longest time, Robert didn't embrace vinyl. Cause he, Deep track, Zach. Happy Independence Day to you, brother. Robert was more into making it sound perfect and, and digital and, and, and true and just ones and zeros, you know hitting yeah. your brain cells yeah but i don't think he really embraced vinyl so this is kind of a new thing when when those albums came out a couple of years ago it was like the first time you saw thrack and some of these things on vinyl so it was like yeah. you know i think if i didn't own one of those and some stuff like that came out for 23 24 that's not a bad get right if i told because you, you don't you don't have lizard i have a couple copies i don't have lizard. you don't have lizard I don't, I don't think you have islands i don't have islands they're great albums they're yeah. effing great albums those are kind of two that would kind of that would kind of rub me. You know what I mean? That yeah, would, yeah. You uh, might you might take it. I think you not a completionist, but I would I, I almost digitally, mm -hmm. so I like them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just wouldn't. It's not. I'm not going to go out of my way and spend thirty bucks on something like. Anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. Uh, Let's um. Marbles. You want to do marbles? Yeah, we need to do Whoa, marbles. whoa, whoa. You guys want to do some marbles? I heard I heard marbles a few minutes ago. You guys want some marbles? It was, it was probably like 30 minutes ago. We may have to do some marbles as soon as we get rid of this picture of Steve. I'm sorry. That's not a picture of Steve. Wait. That's me, that's me and Jack. <laughs> well, here we go. Look, guys. Let me, let me launch. We'll launch a... Um, Hashtag. I'm gonna Hashtag. do a. I'm gonna do. A, you guys want to? I'm gonna do a random track. Let's do a random track. Boom. <laughs> what is going on there? How's that echoing? How's that echoing? Huh? Can we enter? Is the time? Yeah, we can enter. So exclamation point play. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Cut that off. Play, I'm, play. That. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to enter. Cut the sound down. Hold on. Hold on. Exclamation point. No. Do it, Jay. No. Do it, Jay. Exclamation point. Do it, Jay. Play. No. Turn it up. Turn it up. Exclamation point. Play. Exclamation point. Play. You guys. Everybody's. 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 No. Everybody's goofing no, around. No, 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 no. I'm closing it down. I'm closing it down. Where's your speaker at? Yeah, that's great. Your speakers are right there, but it's not close to any mic. So you guys are. There we go, there we go, there we go, yeah. There we go, there we go, oh, there we go, okay, yeah. Hey! Oh my God! All right. <laughs> I think now Jay's still gonna enter. He's still waiting on you after all of this. God damn it! <laughs> all right, I'm starting it. Ten seconds. You guys ready? Here we go. 
Here we oh, go. Did you choose this one or is it? No, it's a rando. That was so cool. Rando. Here we go. Good luck, everybody, except me. I'm just kidding. Good luck, I everybody, win. except me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> See, some of you guys from YouTube are, are going to come in as restream bot. Oh, this is the one that takes me. Good luck oh, to you. Of course, Jay's in front. But oh, I think, this is the one that I, takes I think forever. I can, I think I, t I can tell everybody that if you're playing on YouTube, you're not going to win because no one's ever won on you from YouTube. Look who's in first place. Yeah, look who's in first place, Dave. Let's oh. take a quick peek. Do it again. Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, okay. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Michael Cron coming out with a solid lead. Boom, it stalls it up. Stalls it up. Oh, yeah, oh look who's coming. Oh, come on. Come on. Jay the curb is down front. Guarantees he goes off the track right here. Come on. Come on. Get him off of there. Get him off. Oh, look who's in first. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. Whoa. That's... You're way ahead. This is... No, this is... Um, You're on a different track? Oh, yeah! oh he won. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! You take a shortcut or something? Come on! Wow, that was a short track. Come on! That was it. Yeah, that wow. was uh, that oh was uh, what's the one up there in um, Bristol. Bristol. That's Bristol? That's the Bristol it's track. The short track. I don't like this. Look, there's no one else. There's no one. else. Still no one else. Apparently, I went off the track here. Can you look at the other crowd? Yeah. That's the captain. Oh, he missed it. Everybody missed it. I was follow the captain. <laughs> He's still the only one who finished the race? Nobody else has finished. We gotta wait for everybody to finish? To land somewhere? Just in second. Restream bot. Restream bot coming in at sec in oh, second. Oh look, place. He's, got, he's got the zone moving in behind him. I've never Poink. seen this. Poink. Oh, and nope. Oh, <laughs> no. The Kerbus. First place. What all the man? Uh uh, it's a wall hack, yeah. I, apparently, every, even even a blind squirrel does find a nut. This this theory's been proved tonight. By the tonight. way, let me first officially uh, tell everybody happy 4th of July. Oh. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jay. <laughs> um, For that nugget. Yeah, Jay wants to wish everybody happy. Do you have, are you have a mic? Do you have a mic, Jay? No, of course. Oh, Steve just asked if Jay had a mic. Well, I know there is a mic because I used it last time. I was off mic. Of course, of course. You I was did. off mic. I was actually on. Of course mic. you did. Okay. But did Jay use it? Probably not. Probably not. Let's get into a little bit of what we played this evening. Got some good stuff. Nice diverse stack of record albums that we played this evening. We won't say vinyl records, because that's douchey. But this was left on the table from last week. We played a, tr uh, a little bit. This was one of the uh, ones that sounded the worst. Excuse me. The, um, one of the better records that sounds better on vinyl. That really kind of stands out. What? Neil Young's Harvest. They'll do a thing about that. Yeah, last that was week. the whole thing last week. Okay. And um, healthy discussion. Healthy w discussion. And uh, this was uh, I, I left this on the table because then we played the si side two uh, over on Twitch after the show, and um, this was still left on the table because I had not played a damn record album all week long. I played some Spotify and some Pandora and some shit, but I not had the time to get in here and like actually mm. play a vinyl record this week. So it was still on the table, if you can believe that or not. And uh, but it was great. It was great to kind of start the evening with that. That's kind of a good vibe. Normally start with some low key jazz or something like that. And uh, but it, the, the the needle kind of fit that purpose tonight, for sure. Then I went over to some probably more standard early grown man record night uh, material. It's this fantastic uh, Impulse Jazz compilation from Jesus Christ, I don't know when. But uh, the Definitive Jazz Scene Volume 2, and you can see the list of the artists here. Um, Ray Charles is on here, Coltrane, Tommy Flanagan, Lionel Hampton, J.J. Johnson, J. J. Shirley Johnson. Scott, McCoy Tyner. You don't have to call me Ray. 
You don't it's a have fantastic to call me uh, compilation. Let's see what kind of gate. You don't have to call me Johnson. Anything worthy of anything? I can't really see that. But you say command? No, impulse. Impulse. It's that nice. This. Why would I think Colt? This is a seventy-five command. cent um, record. Yeah, from Goodwill. <laughs> Quality stuff. I like and, and I, I like I, I like the feel of it too. Yeah. It's got that shiny like command. veneer kind of. Yep. Maybe that's why I thought command. And then Steve, you were here early tonight. Steve. You actually Fairly were. early. I didn't make it on time for the beginning of the show. But I thought, well, let's throw a country record on. I love quality album. The Redheaded Stranger is my favorite Willie Nelson album. And it's it's a you know it's a. And this is this is actually where we found out tonight. Apparently, Willie has released. Oh yeah, yeah. Ninety-six records, um, seventy. To, this would be a seventieth solo record, which is nuts. And I don't know if you guys have listened to the one that came out today. We have not. I, that, I missed that. And always, I, I mean to say this every week, but I often forget to say this. Yeah, we do. We do all this stuff that you know, new stuff that comes out this week, and all this stuff. We are totally gonna be. Um, totally going to be missing stuff from time to time so if we miss something that comes out feel free to leave us a comment it's like hey dipshits don't forget about blah 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 that came out today also oh we're always into blah 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 so yeah, let us yeah, know about it, that it, sometimes it happens you know? uh, kind of going from that <laughs> Merv says uh, Willie looks constipated on that cover. He does look a you little. Know, he kind of did. Uh, he kind of did. I'll be honest with you. A fantastic Ventures record. Um, Swamp Rock. Love Ventures. Yeah, that was Rubbing. good. That was good. It's from 1969. Honky Tonk Woman, Green River, Proud Mary, Carry Me Back, Suspicious Minds, Muddy Mississippi Lines. I think I like that a lot better than their earlier stuff. You know, I, I love, this is, uh, the Ventures are a grown man record night staple. The instrumental versions of some kind of like classic hits and stuff. None of my Ventures records are in good shape. I have a, several that are actually not, but this is one that <laughs> wasn't too bad. No, it wasn't bad. And um, I've got some super clean ones, and I've got some ones that look like people have written on them, written on them with screwdrivers. That's a stupid, it's it's kind of a stuff. stupid and creepy cover, though, yeah. Ventures for, for the have, Ventures. You know, I said earlier, and this is a two-fold statement, the Ventures have the greatest covers. And then I had to stop and be like, yeah, no, no, no. From up there. Cal Ripken. Uh <laughs> You guys big into Cal oh, Ripken? What is this, 88 Donners, Shane? Yeah. Well, 88 Donners, Diamond, Diamond King. King. What about 10 cents? 10 what cents, baby. Thing? No, but um, I said the Ventures are, uh, that's the wrong record. The Ventures have the best covers, and I meant album covers, but also they do, you know, covers. And they're really good at that, too. But this one, Steve, you pulled this out. This is oh. just... Woo. Yeah, I showed this off a couple weeks ago, I think. Woo. That's the Funky 16 Corners. It's a compilation that came out in 2010, I think. Keep this shit on your radar, folks. And it's really cool. It's, um, was it Cut Chemist? Uh, but the guy who owns the label for Peanut Butter. Oh, Peanut Butter Wolf. Wolf is the producer of the album. So, so these, stone throw, so these guys, stone this thing. is another example of like Cold Heat, the, the other compilation I have. Yeah. That is basically oh, a a guys guy. guys who are record diggers who are looking for beats go out and they find these things. So th it's a compilation of what they have, some of the cool beats they found, the actual tracks, um, a double album. That's especially. And good. these are artists that you probably have never heard of before. I think we heard folks like uh, Co Real Artists, Soul Vibrations, Slim and the Soulful Saints. Billy Ball and the Upsetters, <laughs> featuring Roosevelt Matthews. <laughs> Billy Ball and the Upsetters, featuring Roosevelt Matthews. And Soul Seven. I'm yeah, so, you know. I'm gonna stop the show right there. <laughs> well, I'll try to hit the button. We're gonna shut the whole show down. Soul Vibration sang a song called "The Dump." <laughs> 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 you almost choked on that. <laughs> All right. Then you pull this one out, Steve. We gotta move it along. We're moving it along. Okay. This may be my favorite King Gizzard I've ever heard. Um, I, I don't remember that one. I, you know, I haven't played it much. Michael Cross um, says that this one gets kind of skipped over a lot by King Gizzard people. Yeah, it, it's it's 2018, so it was right after that 
2017 when they put out like five Tons albums. Tons of them, yeah. The and so year. this came out in 2018. And then after this one, they put out a real heavy one like the in Infest the Rat's Nest. And I, I, I don't listen much. It's, it's more mellow, but like I threw it on side two because I knew it had that heavier track on it, which was really, really cool. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good record. I just don't, like I said, I, honestly, I'll, I'll I'll admit I don't I don't listen to it very much, I'll, which I'll, is cool because I can come back to it and rediscover something I hadn't heard before. Gumbo, was, Gumboat Soup, by the way. This was part of the um, the game from a couple weeks ago from uh, Michael Cron, right? This, uh, yeah, Jimmy I brought that uh, Jimmy Smith album because I that Rebus uh, game that we played, which we couldn't figure out. In our, our um, low combined intelligence, we couldn't figure out that Rebus is a puzzle game like the game Concentration, where you have Alex Trebek. Alex Tr Concentration? Didn't he do Classic con Concentration? Classic he did, Concentration. He did Classic With the cars that they gave away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, bees, and bees within is bin, and da da da. So that was that weird, um, fa faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Superman. This was the locomotive. So the speeding train or whatever. So oh yeah, that's Jimmy right. Smith's uh, on Blue Note, um, Midnight Special. Mm. Uh, I would have played Summertime because it's summertime, but it's so slow. I wanted to just give you a Jimmy Smith yes. at his best. Yeah. And let me give you who's on here because it's a great album. Um, I don't remember the year it came out. It's earlier on the Blue Note. I think he went to Verb after this. Five. I'm gonna guess like 63 or 61. I, I don't know. I can look it up. Um, but we're talking about Stanley Turrentine um, on tenor sax, Jimmy Smith, of course, Kenny Burrell on guitar, and Donald Bailey on oh. drums. Oh, Donald, Donald Bailey. Bailey. Yes, hell yeah. So Two feet in the gutter, or one foot in the gutter. But just a, two, fan, two a fantastic album. And I will say my copy's not the best, but it's, it's a blue note, and I'm really happy to have it. Want to play something a little heavier, kind of to keep us moving in that vibe, and the old weed eater? Good luck and Godspeed. What was the no, vibe? God of? luck and good speed. I'm sorry. Cape Fear, North Carolina, representing Dixie Dave Collins. This is such a phenomenal record, man. From 2017, I believe it is. Man. Uh, and this Dixie Dave Collins, I think he was in Buzz Oven, and Jay and I played with played with Buzz Oven back in the day. The Godfathers of Does Slug. Buzz Oven have an H in it? Like Buzz Hoven? Yeah, it's like yeah, it with an apostrophe. Okay, yeah. I always was confused. Is it it's Buzz Oven North or Carolina Buzz band. Hoven or? Uh, they, uh, they've known to have Buzz had. Buzz Hoven. They, they, they're yeah. known to have had some substance abuse problems. Oh, interesting. It's okay. You know, we all deal with our own demons. But this is a kick-ass record. Listen to side B because I always want to hear side A, which has "God Luck and Good Speed." Mankind is unkind, man. Uh, but I listened to the other side tonight because we, uh, we don't do that a lot because that's the other one's such a kick ass song. Come on outside. I just realized I have 20 Jimmy Smith albums. Wow. Oh, this this is split stage, by the way. Yeah, I know that. Okay. What is this? This is something I picked up at uh, Ed McKay a few months back. Um, played it, on, I, I brought it to the show, but we didn't play it much. This is called. I do not remember that. Um, yeah, electronic hertz, maybe. What's it called? No, centipede hertz. I don't like how that's by called. Ween. And I, I brought it because I saw someone talking about Ween earlier today on the Discord. Scotty Strickon was thank mentioned. You, thank you. He man. mentioned the uh, the Pizza Hut commercial. Yeah, and I watched it. It was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Was, where's that fucking cheese? Yeah. Where the fuck is that cheese? Yeah. That, I, <laughs> it reminds me of Tim and Eric doing the Rolos. Thing, yeah. You know. Roman but I can see why they, they wouldn't accept the first. The first one was great for like Adult Swim. Yeah. It's not, it, it wasn't nasty. The first one wasn't nasty at all. Working on your factory floor. It was great. This Ween album is really cool. Making Rolo Candy. I think, I, I think it's my second Ween album. I think, I, don't I have the, the other one on vinyl that you had, you gave me on CD that I held for like that 10 years. I held it for like 10 years before I actually listened to it. No. Strawberry Jam. No, that's not Ween. That's not. Oh, you're right. That's Animal Collective. Animal Collective, yeah. Well, maybe is this Animal Collective? Wait a minute. Oh, this is Animal Collective. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it! Erase everything I said about Ween. Um, 
I, I brought this album because someone talked about Weens. So this is Animal Collective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Boomer. Centipede Hurts. <laughs> you kids with your rock and roll music. Here's this sh this whole show now. It's got a mark. Th this show has an asterisk beside it. One asterisk. You pull this mug out. This is Cameraman in the 90s. I don't know if you guys know. Cameraman re released a bunch of uh, albums in the 90s under the name Stephen Wilson. And we went and saw him on his tour last year for the To the Bone we tour. We did. We did. We saw. We Cameraman. Saw, we saw Cameraman's <laughs> the tour. We saw the Stephen Wilson tour and. Um, it was good. It was great. We saw it at uh, Cat's Cradle. Was Cat, it? Uh, no. Was that Cat? No. Wasn't that Cat's Cradle? Yes. yes it's it was no, the one in Carborough? No, it was Cat's Cradle. Yes, kind of a cool gatefold. Yeah, very cool. Good album. Not my not my favorite, Steve. My favorite still Insurgents. The first one? Yeah. The first solo. Which I need. That's what I was probably going to buy that. I went to Hippo Records on Thursday, but they don't open until 12, and I was there at 11. I wasn't going to wait around for an hour. So. And then the last track, or last. Uh, no, what? Not the last. Where's all those 45s? I didn't bring them over here. Oh, you want me okay. to? I'll grab them. I got them in a. I got them in, or, in order. If they sit, Jay, grab them. Why am I a pile up there. It's that. St it's that stack right in front of the. Uh, the ones on the. Yeah, right next to the wrestler there. But the last LP Steve played was this blues record. I, I don't remember you having this. You had this a long time. Uh, yeah, I've had it for a while. Blues are uh, black. Blues are black. Yeah, and I didn't bring it for any other reason than it's a great blues album. It's a great compilation with uh, John Lee Hooker, Memphis Slim, uh, oh, whoa. Brownie McGee, Brownie? Sonny Terry, Lightning Hopkins, and Big Bill Boozy. Yeah, Bruzy, sorry. I think I went to school with a Brownie McGee. Um, in, in fact, this, that same lineup is, is side A all the way down, side B is the same artist with different songs. Well, great Cameron album. says, Cat's Cradle Needs Your Help About to Fold. Well, they're doing those things like the like, like Ziggy's or uh, Ramcat's doing, where they have performances online. But, oh yeah, you know but they're not that, making, that ain't gonna save. That ain't gonna save you. You, you make money from beer sales. You gotta sell alcohol. Yeah. We also got to have another drink fever comment. What? For misrepresenting that last album. Oh. Yeah, that won't help. <laughs> I totally destroyed that uh, sleeve, by the way. That's all right. Sleeves are meant to be busted, just like Hyman's. Oh. Hello? What's that? Uh, Jerry, if we want to run that back, we can pick up the two shot from the wider angle. Before, before the Hyman comment. Yeah, we set up, <clears throat> go ahead and set up for the crane shot and we'll move in. Just on mark it. The, mark, this, just this mark it. Segment. Mark it. We'll do it later. Just mark it up. Yep. I know Bill called in. It's no big deal. Just set up the shot. Set up the shot. All right. Okay. Then to finish this off, we had a, a few 45s. Just because we, I figured with a 45s, I was like, oh, we're getting close to the show. If we do 45s, we can more aptly. That was kind of fun, actually. When yeah. in the show it was, was a lot of work for me. Found some 80s stuff. I found, I found some so stuff. You, you handed me a stack of, of 45s. But the first thing you gave me, no, give me the first one first. One? Uh, the one that was on that side, that one right there. Just hand me the slip. What mine? Oh yeah, no no that that was that's important because that's that was the whole. Oh, that's the focus. crux behind it because it was. We we didn't play anything for Fourth of July. You know, people are asking uh, if you've been playing stuff for Fourth of July. We literally, I know people that have not um, been with Record Night for very long. We have done so many summertime playlists and. Fourth of July playlist and Halloween playlist. So we really don't do that much anymore because there are literally six, seven years of that shit out there. And so we didn't do like a Fourth of July playlist, but we did want to roll. I up. do like a good playlist. I, I, I did have this little 45 in here. It's Fort Jackson Sounds of Basic Training, which is apparently a pretty, pretty rare sought after uh, little seven inch. What's this from? Um, doesn't really say. Probably the Vietnam era. Holy shit, check this out though, for real. Produced by who? What? 
Justins. The people that do class rings. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, for class rings, go Justins. Justins. But anyway, it's a bunch of sounds from basic training at Fort Jackson. So God bless the troops. Nice. That's all I can say about it. Um, but then we some other 45s that just popped up over there. Well, you handed me a nice stack. So a nice little stack of a lot of 80 stuff. A lot of these maybe I think came from cameraman actually. Night Ranger, Sentimental Street, boom, kick ass shit. You play this one too? That's Asia. Yeah. Asia 45. Uh, yeah. Don't don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. It was a, a minor hit on the radio. This one. Uh, this was this was the big one for me. I'll be honest with you. Murray Head. <laughs> the greatest name in pop mu music ever. One Night in Bangkok, Murray Head. I remember laughing about his name when I was seven years old. <laughs> um, and then, um, oh, would you play the you play Yes in there too? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. It's uh, Berlin, it's, Take My Breath Away. Well, I know this is cameraman. No, it's B-side. We played the B-side. But we played the B-side. Which is... Uh, uh, Moroder, uh, Giorgio Moroder, who pro either produced the album or produced the film. I can't, I don't know which, because it just says Top Gun, produced by Giorgio Moroder. And the B side is a song by Giorgio Moroder. And I, I've never heard it before. It was very, it was about as 80s as you can get. And this, yes, when's this Yes 45 from? Um, I don't know. That's yours. Is it? Th it must the be song good. Clap is um, Steve Howe's like acoustic, 12 string acoustic solo thing that he does. It's really good. It rounds out. Rounds out. Remind, I mean, both of us, both of us decided that the clap sounds a lot like Leo Kotke. Yeah. Um, yeah oh, yours. that that was yes. That the yeah. That was that was that was wow. uh, Steve Howe. Steve Howe. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Well, let's let's not waste any time. Actually, set those down there so I don't f these up. I don't have this uh, album written down in my. Which one? The one. This Jimmy Smith album. Hmm. It's not in my database. We should get right into a dig of the week. Now we got a very unique dig of the week because Steve, you got some like actual dig of the week stuff. Do I? Right. Yeah, I yeah I got some digs. And and what I have is uh, you know I was talking about we moved the fiance and the kid into the house this week. In the process, what used to be uh, cameraman's room when he lived here is now the kid's room. So I had to clean all this stuff out of that room, and some of that stuff was a couple of boxes of records. And uh, went through a few things, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, blah, 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 blah. It's nothing crazy, but whatever. Then went through this other box, and I was like, holy shit. <clears throat> There's some legit stuff in here that we could, when we talk about digging through your own collection, whatever. So Steve Impromptu made the Seaman's uh, box graphic. That's a night when, uh, I think that was New Year's. Siemens box? Cameraman. Siemens box. <laughs> <laughs> now, that I, now that I look at it, maybe not the best choice of, of convert, turning cameraman into Seaman. I think <laughs> he's the Seaman. Well, now. I used to call Carl Seaward before I knew that that was, uh, you know, a bad, bad thing. But The uh, Seaman's box. But yeah, this is all things from the Seaman's box. Um, this was, Oops. This was a night where he he tapped out on us a little early. That may so or may why not get the pick the the phone out and take some pictures. That may or may not have been the floor. So, side note, it was it was a floor. Okay. Okay. Not a floor you want to lay on. But uh, honestly, you, you want me to bust through a bunch of mine? Do some of yours, yeah. Do some Jay, of yours. You I, I've got clean. five, I think. Hand me that stack behind you. And you got to stand up. You got to get you, dip your knees into it. Don't don't lift with your back. It's a big stack. Don't use your back, bro. Use your. You got to bend at your knees. Willie talks fanciful. He's doing it wrong. All right, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. He's doing it wrong. Watch how he's gonna drop him right on you. Oh, right around your computer. All right, ready? Big. Nope. One, two, three. More? Come on, come on. You Wait, doing, no. Are you doing all those tonight? <laughs> Am I? Do half of them. Yeah. Do half of them. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is that really all? Am I really doing all these? No, do half. I mean, so I can blast them. Save half. No, save half for next week. Oh. Cause that, that's like 40 records. Maybe. I don't think all of those were supposed to come, but maybe. It's possible. That's yeah. What, that's what she said. 
Yeah, they probably all are. That's what the I, Bukaki girl said. I don't I think, should, I don't I think all of those are supposed to come. I should. I should probably <laughs> split it up. Um, well, I'll just do. Let me do. Um, this is kind of the stuff that kind of popped up. Look at split. That I was like, oh shit. Oh, by the way, that uh, Jimmy Smith album is from 1960. Okay. It was the same cool. session at. Um, that Chicken Shack album he did, which I think you have. Jimmy's Chicken Shack? Back at the Chicken Shack? Oh, yeah, yeah. But look at here now. We have, we, we got, um, this is stuff that was cameraman stuff. Best of Merle Haggard. Boom. I'm going to do these quick. Oh, okay. I have that. Pearl. Oh, Janis Joplin. Of course. Boom. Look at here. <laughs> I've got this one already. Uh, greatest Hits. Waylon. That's one of the best greatest hits album ever, right there. Boom. Beatles. Brand what? new hits by John, Paul, George, and Ringo. The Beatles '65. Oh, '65. That was in there. It's a U.S. It's a collector's item. Boom. Some stores will have it for like a hundred dollars in in the shape it's in right Some here. Some early jazz. Uh, Buck Clayton. They're fools. Who, it's kind of Buck Clayton Buck featuring Buck, Buck, Tate and Buck Clayton. Featuring Woody Herman. How High the Fi. I love that How title. How High the Fi. I love the cover. Yeah, that's a great cover. That looks cool as hell. Yeah, I don't know this, but Woody Herman, so it's probably a little bit more of earlier jazz kind of Bob. I got a Buck Clayton. He's, he's Kansas City uh, jazz. Kansas City jazz, Jay says. Moods of Marvin Gaye. Never heard this before. Never heard this Jimmy before. Jones. My dad's on here. Jimmy Jones on here. Okay, Double boom. J. Keeping it moving. No, no dallying, no dallying. Oh, you got some good records here. What are you doing? These are not even the best ones. How? Oh! War. Life is so strange. Do you have this I one? I don't have that. I've never seen weird, this before in my life. That looks like an 80s record. I don't know what this is. It's still in the shrink. It's a war record. That's in there. Boom. I pulled this out strictly because of the cover. Never heard of this guy in my fucking life. But holy shit, what do you guys see this cover? Boom. <laughs> you tell me this guy doesn't fuck right Bill here. Medley? Oh, Bill Medley? You've never heard of Bill Medley? I don't I think still, so. The Righteous Brothers? I oh, he's from the Righteous Brothers? Yeah. Okay. Is he, which Righteous is he? Oh, this guy fucks. Those guys' names weren't Righteous? It's one of the Righteous Brothers. That guy fucks right there. That's all I'm going to say now about I it. Yeah, oh, yeah. The best the of the best of Merle Haggard. I got all right, everybody shut up. Moving on. Dilly Dallying. Yeah, we showed the best of Merle Haggard. How about the best of the best of Merle Haggard? Boom. <laughs> Boom! Ooh, wait, Classic. Is that a compilation within a compilation? <laughs> I know it's coming next. <laughs> Clapton, the best 46 the best Ocean the Boulevard. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm not a big fan of these solo Clapton albums as much as some people, but uh, you know, eh, it's a good record. Yeah, that's a good record. Good record. Uh, Merle Haggard, It's Not Love. Motherless Children's on here. I do have this one. This is a great Merle Haggard. <laughs> right here, above. I shot the sheriff and Motherless Child's on here. Nice. I've got that one. That's a good Merle record. Merle. Can we do some more? I'll do I'll do a couple. I mean, I'll do the whole stack, Steve. We can blast Mrs. Through Robert Merritt signed his forehead. <laughs> Bill Medley looks like a CCM record. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Do it again, do it again. Yeah, a lot of these are, have the same couple's uh, autograph. Did he get these in that? Song? Some, maybe. What? Some some of these records have both the, the wife and the uh, husband's signed. signature on Both of them signed it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck with it. So them. I've got some records from uh, a place, uh, one of our, our honey hole digging spots. Mm. Um, I think I've got two or three from there here to talk about. First one is a 12-inch uh, single... From Human League. Oh, I love Human League. Uh, it's uh, Hard Times slash Love Action. It's pretty good. There's a, I, I, the only reason I really picked it up is one of the uh, alternate um, versions on here is just an instrumental, which is actually pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, whatever. You know, it's only 12 inch, but it's. I like Human League. Yeah, I do I too. I got no problem with that. I really do too. Another uh, weird album. Uh, I got from Jonathan in a, uh, I think it was in his uh, uh, sale, sale area, the clearance area. Oh, clearance. This clearance. is uh, the, called the Superions, which is, um, it's Fred Schneider from the B-52s. Oh. So that's okay. so my second Fred Schneider album. Um, What's up, Scotty Strickland? My favorite, so the songs are those sexy saucer girls 
But my favorite song on here is called Who Threw That Ham at Me? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mr. Poopy Pants. Well, go ahead, Mr. Poopy Pants. And Totally Nude Island. Whoa, is whoa, whoa, song. what is that? So, it's, it's, uh, it's actually kind of a fun, fun little record. Fred Schneider. Fred Schneider, B-52. It's on some, some kind of clear vinyl. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. This is what I thought was the, the swinging dick in this stack until I went even further. Um, Dwayne Allman Anthology, Volume 2. I have Volume 1, I think. Yeah, I have Volume 1. This is Volume 2. This is uh, um, Muscle Shoals, All Day yep, Long. Yep, yep. Boom. I mean, this is... He played know. with a lot of artists. Yeah, this is kick-ass, man. I didn't, I didn't realize this was back there, man. He did a lot of... With, is Wilson Pickett on there? I don't know. You can well, dig through if you want. I'm going to keep going. Uh, this is not a, an artist that I'm particularly fond of. King but, Curtis. But a little... Otis, uh, Otis Rush. Ronnie Hawkins. Wilson Pickett. Whoa. Herbie Mann. Whoa. He played on Push Push. Did you know that? That's the, Dwayne the nasty one where he's really? all naked. Yeah. Dwayne Alban was required to take his shirt off. Boz Dwayne. Skaggs. Wow. What a lineup. Delaney and Bonnie. Uh, Almond Brothers, of course. So, very cool. Very cool. How about a little Leon can, can Russell, have, Will have, of the Wisp? Can I have that? You know this record, Will of the Wisp, Leon Russell? Um, nope. Not not a huge Leon Russell fan, but I don't. I'm not opposed to it. I think I've got a Don't couple. seek it out. And if you look on the back, he's got um, Fly by Night. Fly by Night, away from here. You know, we're always in the market for it. And these are Cameron's records, but. Looking for like um, dope ass Christmas records. Oh, always. How about Buck Owens? What's that on his shoulders? Dandruff. <laughs> Buck Owens Christmas yeah. shopping. Santa Claus by the It's funny to see. <laughs> Christmas with Buck Owens and his Buckaroos. So two Christmas Buck Owens records. Christmas shopping. Holy Christmas Lord. time is near. The jolly Boom. Christmas. Po the Dilly dallying. The jolly move. Christmas polka. He's got a lot of, uh, and here's another one. This is uh, religious songs from Buck. This is gospel stuff. Santa gonna come in a stagecoach. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what it's that. <laughs> gonna come in a stagecoach. Dust on Mother's Bibles. Songs of Faith and Religion by Buck Owens and his Buckaroos. Same thing. I've never seen this. You ever seen that? It's like no. a gospel Buck Owens record? No. Kick Jesus, ass, man. Jesus took my liquor today. Um, it's, it's got uh, Satan's gonna get along without me. Right. He might not. Um, Eternal Vacation. Whoa. <laughs> That's heavy. All the Way with Jesus. Uh, what's that, Jerry? We don't have... Was this during his God. drug phase? Two more. When Jesus calls all his children in. But last but not least, I'll go to church again with Mama. Okay. Heavy hitter. Maybe the father of bluegrass. Could not believe this was in it here. It is the father of bluegrass. Bill Monroe sings country songs. Hello? With the bluegrass boys. Yes, he does. Wow. But if you look across the front, got the signature. Or uh, the Merits, yeah. Is uh, the, Do the boys play on here? Um, Splat yeah. and Scruggs? Yeah. Does the boys? Nope. No, they don't. Maybe they do. I don't know. Then Jimmy Rogers got wrote a couple songs on here. It doesn't tell you who plays on this album. They always did that in the early records. I was just wondering, because Flat and Scruggs used to be, you know, in Bill Monroe's band. Oh, yeah, it yeah. it pissed them off when, he, when they left. Yeah, that was a thing. But check this out. Wow. Never seen, that, never seen this. Waylon, Greatest Hits, Volume 2. What do you mean, yeah, I've got that. Do you really? I brought it, yeah. Have you really? <laughs> Boom. Another one I'm not Great really record. familiar with. Waylon never could uh, toe the mark. Boom. Don't know that one. That's a weird looking one there. Never seen that one. Is this disco era? Another Waylon Lob. Look at, look at the picture on the back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Switch. Yep. Don't get too close. Uh, back up. Light, 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 light. There you go. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect business right there. Here's a Waylon Lob record I also didn't have. RCA. Look at that. I don't know when that's from. I'm gonna. 
blast through the couple two other country records. Seventy six. Cameraman actually turned me on to this band by picking stuff up at Goodwill. This is Country Roads by the Osborne Brothers. Now the Osborne Brothers was oh, known, yeah. known in the blue, bluegrass scene for some of the first folks to incorporate percussion. Drums, drums yeah. yeah. Drums and percussion into bluegrass music. Um, and this is, I've got a couple of bluegrass, uh, I mean uh, Osborne Brothers That's stuff. Before Ozzy went solo. This is 71. 71. Kick-ass bluegrass, man. If you guys are into bluegrass, look out for the Osborne Brothers. This was another one that floated in there. This is one that has the, both the husband and wife signatures on it. C.W. McCall, who I love. Black Bean Roads. Great album cover. And you can see both of the, the husband and the wife right there. Convoy. Yeah. I've got some C.W. McCall, but not this one. That's a kick-ass looking You know, deal. he also is the man behind Mannheim Steamroller. Really? Yes, he is. That's kick-ass. Do you a couple, Steve. I'm going to blast through all these. Actually, before, before you start... Oh, Convoy is on here. Is it really? And here's a great little picture of uh, C.W. McCall. Take take my shot. Hold up. Boom. He's not smoking. He's just got a flower in his mouth. Yeah, these are all your records, dude. You got to come up here and get them. All right, so... Uh, on, before you do it, one more. All ears. Oh, look at that. Yeah. All Ears is 10 new and original songs, hits with a CB theme. Hell yeah. Now it says... We got some trucker records. We ain't got no CB records. When America falls in love, it falls hard, Steve. And then it celebrates in songs. So it is with Citizen Fan 2A Radio, otherwise known as Ears. This album is a real slice of Americana mid-70s, Ooh. tells it like it is on the open road. Music for every taste. Pop, rock, soul, country, trucking. Sung and told. Who and produced it? Is, it? is it Radio Shack's produced? By it, realistic. realistic. This yes, is by is. realistic. Realistic. And if you look, as cool as this looks. Look at the back. If you look at the back. Look at the back. Oh, 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 oh product. Oh my God. Product line. Looks like a Sears Wish book. Man. That is so kick-ass. The songs are Hey Shirley. This is parentheses. This is squirrely. So, <laughs> hey Shirley, this, this is, is squirrely. Honeybee, come on, come on, CB baby. Everybody's somebody in our CB world. Hey, good buddy. That means something else nowadays. Hey, good buddy. That means something else nowadays. All right, buddy. Mm. Hey, good buddy. Okay. Listening, CB rules. Ain't that cat's getting ain't fat? Ain't ever gonna be lonely again. LJCB Radio, the night I talked to the Lord. That seems heavy. But, but kick ass. He says he bet that smells great. Well, Probably. That's a nice record right there. Yeah. All right, do you a couple things. All right, uh, so back to uh, Honey Hole. Uh, picked Pete. up the Hughes Corporation. Oh. Freedom for the Stallion. That's a new one on me. Um, they're from that early disco era. I think this is 73, though, if I'm not mistaken, which um, I, I bought. I picked it up because it's, uh, well, it was only a couple bucks, but it has Rock the Boat, which I love uh -huh. that song. I, I grew up listening to that when I was, we'd go to Indiana every summer, and one summer they were playing Rock the Boat a lot, and it was just like, Rock the Boat, don't rock the boat, baby, don't tip the boat over. I never cool. Knew, I never knew who, who did that song. Hughes actually. Corporation. Uh, one more. Um, I think this is the Tubes' uh, first album. Oh, it's I love called, the Tubes. It's called The Tubes. Um, it has uh, White Punks on Dope on it, which is a pretty cool song. Tubes are great, kind of underrated. So here's the front. What's really cool is not just the art, the picture on the back, but it's Boobs. there's a note on it written to somebody, which I will read to you. Okay. It says, to Marty. <laughs> I like it already. Um, still crazy after all these months in memory of our night at the bottom line and the Patty Hearst show. Whoa. The what? L much love. Happy holiday. And it's signed. It's not fee. I wish it was. It's just somebody with a C-H like Charlie. Look at th what it says, Pat, right here it says Patty Hearst. What is that word right there? Can you figure that out? Shogun. Seagull. So it's like show. I think it's show. It's either the Patty Hearst 
uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is either. So apparently Marty and this Charlie guy are in the go kart drawer. <laughs> went to a Patty Hearst show. Jay. Cameron said in the go kart drawer. And it's so it's funny because both both huh? Marty. Both Marty what? Never Both been. Mr. Bananas and I work for the Hearst Corporation. Go we, what? Remember how Marty slept in the drawer? Oh, yeah. yeah. I got one more. Wait, wait, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. All right. Hearst, the brainwashed chick? I'm yeah. More stuff from Cameraman's Box. Um, this is a band. Do not sleep on this band. Holy Lord. This uh, group, I know you guys are familiar with Hiroshima. This is Hiroshima's Adori. 70, no, 1980 on Arista. I mean, if you looked at the I, back, of, if you looked at these guys, you'd be like, get these guys off my turntable. I would say Hiroshima. This shit smokes. Like Japanese fusion funk stuff. Really? Oh, it's so good. It's so Hiroshima. good. We I want to listen to I'm that. A big yeah. Fan it's, I mean, this it's, is Cameron's? It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So w what made him pick by this? Or he, this might have been in a, some kind of... It could have been in a bulk he, deal or... Barter, some kind of barter situation. Wow, it's in really good, good, good shape. Yeah. That's a good record. Shame, it's, it's, shame it's not a Japanese pressing, though. <laughs> Yeesh. Um, how about a little... I've not really seen this one around. I've got some lips... Yeah, you incorporated. do. Incorporated. This is four. <laughs> lips Incorporated four. 1983. So that's late for lips. But this is still funky, man. Late, late for lips. Late for lips. Electro, um, electro disco funk stuff from like the 80s. You know what I mean? Good stuff. Boom. Keep Boom. it moving. Oh, a solid banger in this. Covers in pretty rough shape. Not real. Not real sure about the vinyl, but. Nevertheless, Wilson Pickett in the Midnight Hour on Atlantic. Look at that mug. Let's see what the record looks like. I'm just curious. No, it's got some on the marks. purple and red Atlantic. It's, it's got some marks, but it's not crazy. It's not. It's nice. not. It's not beat. What year is that? You don't. Ah, uh, it's a like 66. Let me see that. 65. 65. Now, here's something that didn't have a uh, cover on it, but I wanted to pull it out for whatever reason. Oh, I know why. Because, look, the Beverly Hillbillies, this is all flats and scrug stuff. So it's got the theme. It's a 2 eye Columbia, Beverly Hillbillies. It's got the theme, plus it has, like, you know, Ellie Mae by the Cement Pond and shit like that on it. I figured that'd be kind of cool to check out. I don't remember. I remember sort of listening to that, banging through a couple. Dragon and Surfing, Jan and Dean. Boom. Kick-ass record, man. Love this shit. I'm, Especially I'm summertime. I'm inspired to do some one-offs after the yeah. show. Just of the of C-Man's box. Summertime. That's all. <laughs> uh, Rob from Boston mentioned, like, hey, don't forget, you know, he listed some summertime stuff. Janet Dean was one of those he mentioned. Okay. I love Janet Dean. Kick-ass stuff. Um, Drag City. This is, hey, look. What's in Seaman's box? Iron Butterfly and it got a DeVito sitting in the box. You guys know about it. Iron Butterfly. butterfly. Just sitting in there chilling, just cold chilling. Nice. That's a classic. Steven Stills. I have that one. Pretty good. So why was my, wearing the jersey? That was my on parents. It's got love the one you're with. Right? I don't like that picture. The the football it's like a Rams jersey? Vikings. Well, Vikings, yeah, you're right. The 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 football jersey riding a horse bothers the fuck out of me, I'll be honest with you about it. But <laughs> other than that, love some Steven Stills. Classic Ahmad Jamal, but look at this, look at this suit this mug is wearing, man. Look at this suit. <laughs> I mean, let's reiterate, look at this suit. Nice. He looks like a skeleton, like he's been propped up with something. This is 76. <laughs> a late Ahmad Jamal, 76, man. Stepping out with a dream. Stepping out with a dream. I, I don't have no idea what that sounds like. Be interested to hear what that sounds like. Uh, he's, he's got a suit on, a different suit on on the back, by the way. Oh, what? Boom. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's more sensible. That's more businessman. What if he was dressed as a Viking riding a horse? That would be better than the Vikings jersey. No offense, Kristoff. I know you're a Vikings fan. But uh, yeah, this guy, I wish I realized this was back there when he passed uh, uh, 
a couple of months ago, Bill Withers, Menagerie. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't mm -mm. own any Bill Withers because mm -mm. when he passed, I was kind of looking for I some. I got a couple. Um, you know this one? No. 77 on CBS. I don't know if it's anything that anybody cares about in terms of like song selection. Something we picked up. Uh, Lovely days on here. I mean, all lovely day. I love the clavinet day, sounding stuff. Day. You know what I mean? But no, there's uh, a, there's a few good songs on here. Yeah, some funky ones. Want to spend the night? It's awesome, great song. We talked about Edgar Winter Group recently. We talked about the White Trash. This is the um, this is the first one. Steve, is that the first one? Uh, you know, you asked me that. <laughs> you, you you bought you showed. I had your, one a couple weeks ago. And you say, is this the first? It was one? the is second. This the first one. It was the second. I'm like, I don't know what. It, you, and we both agreed that so we don't is, know much about Edgar Winter. So this is not White Trash. This is the does Edgar that, does Winter. Does that one group. have um, Frankenstein on? I think it does. I think that one has Frankenstein on it. Yeah, this is that's the one, the one they always show. This is the one with Frankenstein. When they talk about Edgar Winter. Yeah, that's the most popular one. Let me spend a lot of time on it. You guys know what it is. This one, however, um, there's Ronnie Montrose. Oh yeah. You asked. You were you were trying to see if he played on the other album. He plays on this one. There's Ronnie, right there of of Montrose fame. Very cool. This is one I don't own. This one, Neil Young, "Time Fades Away." It's sitting in that box, just cold chilling. That's what. Well, Wayne Wayne Amos, I think it says Wayne Ames. I'm not as familiar with this record. I, I love I see. love Neil Young. David Crosby and Graham Nash play on it. They feature. They feature. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this at all. Okay, it's on reprise. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. What you got left, Steve? Um, just one record. Just one, uh, I'll finish mine off. Went to, uh, no, I'll go ahead and do it. I went to uh, Underdog a couple days ago and picked up this uh, compilation. It's uh, <laughs> Love Revisited. I think I have oh, some the of the band th Love. I have some of these, not all of them. Very cool. You want to do a side? Yeah. Go ahead and show it. Boom. It's their early stuff, which. Love, I think, didn't last beyond like a used record anyway. or brand new? Used. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Like a compilation of their early yep. stuff? Yep. yep. It's super pricey? When no, we no it's the price is right in front of your face. Oh, no, nope, right in front of your face. Well, I put them on the back. Okay, all right. I like to turn them around. All right. I don't own any love, although I know they're a terrific band. Yeah. This was a, uh, this showed up in that box, in Cameraman's box. Well, Grateful Dead. What? Wake of the Flood. But not only that. And I was like, this is kind of thick. Is there it, another record in it there? It feels kind of thick. So not only that, but in like a, what, a Mofos sleeve? Is that a Mofos sleeve? I don't know. Is the self-titled. What? Clean as a whistle. Look at that. Nice. Set. No, way. Is that not the self-titled? That's yeah. self-titled. From 71? 71 would not be their, wouldn't be their first album. It's probably a live album. What songs are on it? Side, one, side 2 only has one song on it called The Other One. You guys will know. Side 1 has... Bertha, Mama Tried, Big Railroad Blues, and Playing in the Band. Oh, that's uh, live. That's a live album. It's a live album. Yeah. But this other one in here. Where's that Mofi, as you oh, call Oh, wait, it? this is three and four. Okay, so you got the set. It's a double record. You don't have that record's that's not the record. So this is not the correct. It's, it's not. the Bertha record. Oh, get rid okay. of it. Get rid of it. Get so this wrong, is not the right cover. Wrong cover. That's still cool, though. That's still a good. Uh, yeah. Set of LPs. Oh, he yeah. says it's two single halves of two double albums. That's what he said. It's two single halves of two double albums. Okay. <laughs> What's the other one? Europe 72? It's side three and four. Me and my mm -hmm. uncle, Big Boss Man, me and Bobby McGee, Johnny B. Good, and then Fred. Hey, but doesn't it list the album title underneath it? No. Wharf Rat. Yeah, that's the... No. No? Just that's this Grateful the, Day. Uh, no. Wharf Rat, Not Fade Away, and Going Down the Road Feeling Bad. Okay. 
So you got a really cool double album well, there. Well, something that uh, I, I found that I think this was actually mine. Maybe I think I picked this up at Goodwill. It's a forty-five, and this is oh, this is banging. This group I, I found. The group I found, like I've discovered them. Paul Humphrey and his Cool Aid Chemist. Paul Humphrey and his Kool Aid Chemist. So this is actually part of what we played. Yeah, we actually played this earlier. And this is the track we played was Kool Aid with a C. And this is a promo copy of this, even better. But hold on, this I actually I actually did write some stuff <laughs> down about. Oh wait, you guys didn't tell me the music stopped. You guys are fucking up. You gotta tell me when the music stops. When the music's over. Turn out the line. Send me a text. So chat. after after this cat Drop was in, it in this, chat. Uh, after he was in the service, what's his name? Paul Humphrey. Paul Humphrey, excuse me. Worked as a session drummer in New York for Wes Montgomery, John Coltrane, Les McCann, Kai Winding, Jimmy Smith, Charles Mingus, Joe Williams. <sighs> Blue Mitchell, etc. He later reco recorded stuff under the name Paul Humphrey and the Kool Aid a, is Chemist. This a, is this a Seaman's box? No, I think it was mine. Uh, but he had with keyboardist uh, Clarence McDaniel, uh, guitarist David T. Walker, and bassist Bill Upchurch. 71, band had two hits Kool Aid, which we played, and uh, Funky LA. These tracks are funky. I mean, you're talking <laughs> about. They've got like DJ Shadow and Cut Chemist kind of shit written all over them. Drum break, hip hop kind of stuff. That is a 45, and it's it's worth a little chunk, especially as a promo copy. Worth a little bit of a chunk. You gotta hurry up. I gotta get home to watch the end of this uh, no, West no. Coast Eagles Sydney Swans uh, Australian Rules football match. But the kick ass. It's half time. The kick ass thing in this is it live? Uh, in this section here was. In this box was Fred Wesley and the Horny Horns. What? Featuring Maceo Parker. Maceo Parker, that name is familiar. Yeah. Horn player. Fred Wesley's from uh, what, Funkadelic or um, Parliament? Parliament. Maceo Parker, I know from the Jane's Addiction song. My cat's name is Maceo. Maceo. Yeah. So I'll tell you, look, this came out in 77. But the, the, the crazy thing, this, uh, the Horny Horns were a horn section associated with Parliament Funkadelic and Bootsy Rubber Band led by trombonist Fred Wesley. The group also featured saxophonist Maceo Parker and mm -hmm. Rick Gardner and Richard Cush Griffin on trumpets. That's all I really know about that. I, I remember I remember cameraman coming home with something with Maceo Parker on it, but that's all I remember. He says pretty Boots, sure a Bootsy lot of those plays on here a lot. He says pretty sure a lot of those were in rough shape. Maybe when they were in that box, a few gems and that huge purchase I made for fifty bucks. Yeah, the car was bottomed out. Wish we had that picture. He had a Subaru hatchback, and the, the back end was like you did some work. You did work for records, and it was like yeah boxes and boxes of records but so much nonsense but like two or three boxes of like really really good stuff yeah and apparently the car was just bottomed out bootsy and um bernie warrell plays keyboards on here that's badass badass yeah. um produced by george clinton and william collins which i'm guessing is bootsy's real name william so regal well, no one's going to name a child Bootsy when they come out of the vagina. And Maybe. Stuff like that. I mean, well, all right. I was always curious about Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Vince? Like, like, you can't go Jim and Edna Diesel, like... Is this, when is he was this little, a, he, was this, just, he was just... He was... This is a C-Man? Yeah. Wow. All what, right. That's what a, a cute, stack. That's a stack. You blew through it. I blew... I told you I was going to blow it. Thanks, semen. Yeah, thanks, semen. You blew that semen stack. <laughs> Blowing the semen stack live here on Grown Man Record Night. That's what we do here. That's, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you guys. <laughs> Although we got, we got a so to speak in chip chat. 
What's up, Scotty? Uh, we do have a so to speak in chip chat. The chip, the chip chat is actually related to some of the digs I did. It's related to my dig. There's, there's a tie-in, and we're, and we're going to do a, a really interesting uh, little case test comparison. Should we do a marble so, when we come back, or right now? Uh, neither. So I've already won. Let's keep it. Up. Shut up, Jay. Let's let's come back and do it. Let's come back and do it after this uh, dig of the week. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with a so to speak chip chat. Marble Red, somebody stay tuned. I mean, I'm tired of it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because everybody's, everybody's taking their mics off the fucking piss. I love it. No, I'm going to get sodas. Yeah. Shira and I want to talk to you about something that's very personal. Your body. Remember, it's your body and no one should touch you in a way that you feel is wrong. I'll get anybody who tries it. It's not that easy, Orko. It's hard for a young person to admit that he or she has been touched in a bad way. If you've been touched that way, don't be ashamed. Tell someone you trust, like your parents, your doctor, your teacher, or counselor, or your minister or rabbi. Right, Orko? Right on! Hey, do, do you want to do it? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll get it. I'll be right back. Thank you. Mayday! Mayday! Buddy, there's only one shoot on board. If you want it, just say the word. It's yours. Thanks, buddy! Buddy! Man, these are some jeans. New Lee Dungarees. Buddy Lee tested. Can't bust them. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. With Scotch's lifetime guarantee. Take what you want both night and day. Then re record, not fade away. Re record, not fade away. Re record, not fade away. Every recording as good as the first. Or we'll give you a new tape. You can watch Scotch forever. We record, not fade away. Video type game stuff. Get up there, huh? So damn fast.
We're back. Yo, yo, yo. Hope, thanks, everybody, for sticking with us here on Grown Men Record. I know we're getting late into the evening, but you know what? It is what it is, man. I think that place uh, south of the border is coming under a lot of fire right now. Oh, yeah, because of the like racism or whatever? Yeah. Probably. I, I did fail to mention I picked up a, a mask at Underdog. Oh. Kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. There you go, back up under the light. Big menacing. You look like something from Mad Max. <laughs> or some like video game. It's like vinyl, it's like vinyl records. Kind of video not, game villain. I'm not sure it's a very safe mask. It looks pretty thin. Is it, um, but it, I, I like the fact that it um, does this, like whoop. Does it have a pocket in there? It, it covers my whole beard. Most masks won't do that. Does it have a pocket in there? It's, it's pleated. Well, see, I have, I have, uh, my mom made me a couple with like kind of pockets. Pockets. And you put uh, coffee filters in there. Yeah, it doesn't have that. So what are we doing? What are we doing now? Mine has a pocket, so I put it up. Oh. <laughs> All right, Jay. <laughs> so for so to speak, did you check out our show last week? No. Well, if you if you did. We talked about this. Uh, we did a ginger beer. You did. Last week from, um, what was that, Q? What is it, Q? Spectacular ginger beer from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, did you Brooklyn. Like it? Uh, really liked it. L pretty spicy. Spicy. Pretty damn spicy. Well, so that ties, ties into something I wanted to do tonight. I think we should include Q because I didn't try it. And I brought up Blinem's last week, I will say. So while I was passing through... Um, Come on, my mic dropped. My favorite place to get peaches is in, uh, right outside of Gaffney, South Carolina, where the big peach is on the, on the pole. Looks, now, like, looks like an ass. I always heard that peaches come from a can, and they were put there by a man. So, but they sell Blinhams there, and so I picked up a regular and a hot, this is the hot, it's got that's, the, that's really the fuchsia, no. look, they, they say, you know, they if say you, the red top, but it's not this, red. This is our favorite ginger ale, I would, yeah. fair to say? Yeah, hands and down. It's the water, the water is so good. And the red top? There's a well, the, there's like a natural spring. the extra hot. And it, Blinhams is right outside of south of the border. It really? It really yeah, is. Right there at south of and the border. So, like I've got a Blinhams, but um, I was gonna just—I was gonna say let's try, let's just drink Blinhams because it's been a while. But um, I picked up at uh, Best Way Grocery, which has a lot of interesting sodas. So I, I upped our our stock while I was there on Thursday in Greensboro. Um, I picked up this uh, ginger beer mm. called Devil's Foot. Oh, show show that they have a, They have another one, a regular Devil's Foot, but this is the Devil's Foot. Fuego, Whoa. which tells me this is their hot version. And, Your fingers on Fuego. There you go. And I did notice it's a good old North Carolina thing. Here. Does it? Oh, it does. Look at that, Asheville. Asheville. So we've got a, a North Carolina a ginger beer, Fuego, and we have a hot Blinhams from South Carolina, and from Brooklyn, New York, the Q Spectacular Ginger Beer. So before we do this three-way, excuse me. Um, I'd like to ask if everybody has had their test done. But no, are we looking for the, the ginger beer, 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 Probably the ginger beer <laughs> or the ginger ale that's the hottest? Or are we looking for the best tasting? I want to get that out of the way right well, up front. I would probably say the best tasting, but I definitely want the heat to be a factor. Sure. So I guess the best tasting hot ginger The product. ones that can blend the, blend the now, flavor. I can't tell you this between the ale and a beer, but my guess is there is no difference. There is. Okay. But we'll save that for another time. Okay. It's no big deal. No big deal. Um, okay. Which one do you want to start with? Well, um, let's start with Blinhams, the, most, I'm, the one I'm most familiar with. As our base. That's a base. And I'm going to use, I've got some unsweet tea here I'm going to clean my palate with between... Wigs. So here's Blinhams, a beautiful sleek bottle with what looks like some really smooth 
spot hole sediment. I'm going to curl this. Spot hole sediment. The heat's on the back. It's a good heat, though. Pretty damn hot. Pretty good. Pretty tasty, though. It's like um, hot. If you're in the wing category, it's so smooth. Hot or extra there's hot? There's something about smooth, the smoothness of blinds. So this is our gold standard for ginger ale. It is. Especially for a spicy, hot ass one. Okay. So good stuff. All right, so I'm going to clear my palate. Now let's do the Q Spectacular. This is the one we did last week. Ginger beer. Doesn't, so say, doesn't say hot, but you said it's spicy. Yeah, it doesn't mention hot at all. Okay. Little can, very much uh, marketed for mixing with for like Moscow mules. It's rootier. Rootier. What do you think? Taste it again. It's more like when you get a piece of ginger and you shave oh, it. Oh, shit. Y'all got booted off YouTube about five minutes ago for violating terms during the commercial break. Must have been that fireworks That, that thing. fireworks thing. I'm telling you. Well, that sucks. Well, this ginger beer here we did last week. There's, there's heat to that. You're saying it's rootier. I can taste like the shaved ginger. I can taste like... Deep Track Zach, thank you, dude, for letting us know. That sucks ass. It's more cinnamony. Yeah, that's cinnamony? Cinnamon, nutmeg. I just taste the, the root, of the, the actual uh, ginger root. It's not, um, not as hot. No. I would say maybe more flavorful. It's, it's more mm. complex. Yeah, and I think that's the smoothness of this is doesn't make it complex. Yeah, I take I taste more something, something there. I taste more something than Blinems, and that takes me a little bit to say that because Blinems is our guy. I'm sorry if you're from Michigan. We don't have burners here. Yeah, well, burners burners isn't hot. Though. No, no, it's smooth. Okay. Uh, so this, last this but not least, from one. Asheville, North Carolina, Devil's Foot. And we got booted off YouTube. Fuego. I got to clear my palate. That's such nonsense. I told you that got us popped last time. You did. It just said we could not monetize, and we don't monetize. Did it again. Okay, so this says all natural ingredients, filtered water, of course it's Asheville, y'all. Filtered water, organic ginger root, regional honey, organic cane sugar, and honey. lime juice. Hmm. Whoa. This sounds impressive. So, let's see what we got. Did you show the close-up of this? I did. I'll do another one after I take a little pull. After you drip everything all over yourself. All right, so it's it's definitely not as sweet. More botanical. Also, uh, we would call it maybe nasty. I think if you wanted to... A ginger virgin of a, of a sparkling water. <laughs> or it tastes like a foot and an asshole mixed together. It's not good. That's not good. No. I, look, look at this pr presentation. Legit. And that all natural thing's probably the key here. So if you want to go all natural, then go with the devil's foot. But if you want the real flavor and the heat, I would say Blinem's. No, let's, let's, let's work backwards. Now that we've done that. Okay. backwards mm -hmm. okay my vote hands down best hottest no you don't think so no. I think these are close. These are really close. No, to I'm going to go with Blinem's, both on best and hottest. I think they're close. 
maybe my palate's a little bit confused, but to me, Blondheims are still our gold standard. I think those are both terrific. I think this one's not as terrific, although I appreciate their effort. Um, probably healthier. Probably. Less calories. Yeah. Good stuff, though. I mean, all of, all of them's good. That one's not, for as pricey as that probably was, probably not as good. I think that says 80, 80 calories. Oh, it's probably 144. 170. 170 calories. Sure, of course. That's probably for 8 ounces. No, one bottle. Okay, fair enough. 170 versus 40? 80? Alright, that's a pretty good damn soda to speak. A little, little comparison there. Uh. Alright, let's get into... Um, you guys want to do a little chip chat? Oh, we were, we we're going to do a marble race. We were going to do a marble. Let's do a marble race. Let's do it. Oh, why, why isn't the um, frame's not on there? Boom, there we go. There we go. Let's do another marble race. Uh, see final results. Boom, get out of there. Get out of Random track. Ready? Oh, exclamation point play. Exclamation point play. I'm trying I'm trying to get the, get it out of my head. We got kicked off of YouTube, man. It's a little bummer. This whole week's been like this. Streaming has been just shitty here or recently. It's a bad week for streamers, man. It's a bad week for streamers, man. You guys get in. Let's go. Exclamation point play. I'm going to count it down. Let's go. Exclamation point play. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Here we go. I'm, I'm counting it down. You guys in? Oh shit. Here we go. Here we go. Down the tube we go, just like my life. Down the tube we go, just like my life. Oh, 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 oh. Come on now, come on. Come on, fever. Why, why does it show me in first it's place showing, you're in front of me? I don't know, it seems like it's a little behind. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kerbis off the board. No, 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 you're not, you're off the board. You can't win again. You're terrible. No way. You're What's off the chances it? of me winning twice in one night? Do you really want to know? Oh. Whoa! Somebody just gave me a push from behind. Push Whoa! Oh, guess who it was, Jay? <laughs> guess who it was, Jay? I just took the fast route. Oh! Yeah, yeah I took the fast wait, route. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you wait, went wait, the wait, wrong wait. way, dude. No, no, Scotty Strickland's number one. No, no, no. No, no, no. Me. Me number one. No. 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 Mm -hmm. Come on. This is a weird track. Who's yeah, going in for this? Oh! Ah, Shitholes! I love the cell shedding here. We're close to the finish. Oh. oh! Wait a minute! Hold up! Wait a minute! Hold up! Wait a minute! Hold up! Hold up! Who wants to see what a champion looks like right here? Ah! I'm sorry, everybody else, but you know the world needs ditch diggers too, Danny. That's all there is to it. Good game. Was it? To me, short, it seemed like a, a short track. To me, it seemed like a mud stomping, <laughs> just asshole kicking runaway for champions. And everybody else seemed to be tailing behind like they just don't know what the fuck was going on. 
That's what I saw. But anyway, let's get into a little chip chat. I don't want to dwell. Oh, we still got that. I don't want to dwell on the fact that everybody I the else. The show was over. Fucking dog I was fixing shit. To go. I'm just pretty much the best. Put some records on. But whatever. Um. So while I was at our digging honey hole, they yes, also, they also sell a lot of antiques and stuff. Yeah. But near the red and furniture. But near the, yeah, and That's furniture. That's red butter. Like new, but probably not good. New but furniture. stained. <laughs> <laughs> new stained furniture. New but stained furniture. Yeah, yeah. But near the register, I saw this uh, like big wooden barrel, and in it were like tons of these chips and stuff, and it said, "Free, free, take one." Oh, well, that's sketchy. And I was like, "Are those free?" She's like, "Yeah." So uh, I picked up a bag of chips at, at this digging spot. Um, these are garden. Garden of Eaton. Can we bring them up here? Oh, you got it. No, you show. Garden of Eaton Red Hot Blues. <laughs> what? Made with organic blue corn. So they're corn chips. I love the blue corn chips now. Okay. Well, maybe these are good. These are already expired. Got them. In May. Just pre-COVID? Oh, I guess that was... Mid-COVID. I love the blue oh, corn, but there's no flavor. This is just a good... Let's take a look. I don't know. Again. It's red hot. It, red hot blues? Well, like a, that's just a I don't have my, I don't want my glasses. Read the Our Story Begins. All right, our Story Begins. In 1971, when our founder turned organic blue corn into the first blue corn tortilla chip, today we continue to carefully craft our signature thick and hearty chips from whole organic corn kernels to create the perfect tortilla chip. Our unforgettable flavor comes from our high quality ingredients and organic corn we source from our long term dedicated farming partners. <laughs> farming partners. Thick and hearty red hot blues. <laughs> like dog wieners. Not many ingredients, pretty tasty. Uh, well, I didn't say tasty, but pretty uh, simple. Uh, ingredient list? Ingredient list. Right. Is there a phone number in case we want to get at them? There's a website. Oh, there is a phone number. If you're not com if if you're not completely satisfied, call. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Scotty wants to know if there's fireworks tonight. We got a, I got a firework right here. Isn't there a firework right here somewhere? Are they hot? I got a whistler from the '90s from south of the border, actually. Are they just plain corn? Supposed to be some they're plain, not, they're plain chips. They're not hot. I just had to blind them. Oh, wow, but they do. It's weird. They, they're not the blue corn. They're mixed with like something, so they have this weird ass color. Like a, like a turd. The, this looks like dumpster. They're good. So there is flavor. It's like a tortilla chip. They say it's a good dip chip. It says, get dipping with our hearty, thick, red hot blues. So what is the ingredient list? Because I taste spices in there. Not just like spices. Um, right, organic nice. blue corn, uh, pressed canola oil. Deep Track Zach is now a friend of the program. Thank you, brother. Safflower oil. And or sunflower oil. Seasonings. Tomato powder, rice flour, salt, spices, paprika, Onion, Torula yeast, natural smoke flavor. So whatever spices is, is the secret. I, I, I taste like red chili or, you know. It's a good chip. It's good stuff. It's good for that stuff. doesn't Hell yeah, for free. Especially for a thicker chip, because I think these would make a great dip chip. It says they're vegan. Hell yeah. Vegan it up, baby. No artificial preservatives, no artificial flavor, no high, no hydrogenated oil. Should we light this in the studio right now? Sure. Oh, wait, there's no wick. I wish I had something to dip. You got a dip? You can come up with something. There's no there's no wick. We can light this, but there's no wick. Just these are seriously from like 94, 95. Crack it open in half. And I have a whole bunch of these. They're whistlers. You get one with a wick on it. They're under the sink, right? Or under that... No, oh, they're whistlers. They don't whistle as much as they used to. Much like me. Because of, you know, gum disease and all that jazz. Not a big whistler oh, now. Oh. No, no, no. 
It's a, it's a, it's a gingivitis <laughs> show. ADA joke. You think, you think Whistler's mother ever had a lot of complaints about like your son, he's got a problem. Hmm. This, this message first. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to spread any rumors, but your son's watching you. Uh... Anyway. Yeah, cameraman, you should light those M eddies and throw them in this sink while we're doing the show. I don't know if you guys were around for that a few years ago. Good that times. was a good time. But yeah, cameraman, these are the same. It's those same group of fireworks that I bought when we were in high school. <laughs> and I've not been in high school in a long time, but these don't have a wick on them. Me and Jay fired one off a few we, weeks ago. Uh, yeah, we shot we, some. I think we pulled the wick to make it a house safe. What are you guys putting on the grill next uh, tomorrow? I want to know right now. Let, let me know in the chat. Put, I've it, got, put it in the I, chat right now. Uh, I can't it, tell you. Put it in the chat right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody else. Uh, what are you guys putting on the grill? About, Burgers, dogs, chicken, steaks. Wings. I bought some really nice sirloin steaks that yep. I'm going to kebab. I'm going to cut them up and get some potatoes and some onion and and uh, peppers and make some kebabs, maybe some zucchini or squash. Mm. My wife made seitan, which is a... That's made up. Weird uh, vegetarian thing. Hebrew nationals. Oh, there you go, deep track. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I love some Hebrew I will nationals. throw a couple hot dogs on I think uh, Jay's coming. I'm, I'm, I'm having a uh, fortnight off with Jay's son tomorrow. I'm gonna stay on the sticks on the console, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a kill race for hot dogs. Okay. Kill race for Nathan's hot dogs. What if you win? Winner gets a dog. Then I get to eat a hot dog. In front of him. Sure. Fucking right. He loses. He watches me eat a dog. I lose. I watch him eat a dog. That's how, that's how he trains. Got hey, to kill to, kill to eat. this is America. That's how it works. You do double or nothing? Maybe. If I feel like it. Well, if not, we can do that. We can do a hot dog eating contest. Your son's name's not Nathan, is it? Oh. It'd be ironic if it was. <laughs> it would, don't you think? Are they doing that this year? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. No. COVID hot dog eating contest? It'd be hard to do the math. My uncle told me to come over for a hot dog eating contest tomorrow night, but he said, uh, we're not firing up the grill. <laughs> Jerry, just get the second shot ready. I don't care if the two shot, get a, get a two shot. Pull the camera back, get a two shot. And take. I told you, look, how easy was that? All right. Thank you guys for staying with us on Grumman Network. Don't go anywhere. You guys on Twitch. Apparently all you guys are on Twitch now because YouTube kicked us off. We got to investigate that a little further. Don't go anywhere. We're going to stop down for just a micro... Organism of a second. Mic... Micro second of a... Of, and we'll come right back. We're going to play some more records. I think we're going to play some Seaman's Box one We're going to play some of those Cameraman records. Se we're going to play some records um, out of Seaman's Box. We're, we're going to play those. Don't go anywhere. I swear to Christ, if you leave, I, you're out of my will. Stay right Stay right here. No, Nobody good night. Nobody, nobody, nobody great show good night. Fuck all that. Stay right here. Stay right here.